Every season, it feels like we have more anime than ever before. We went from having 12 anime 4 years ago to over 54 this season. However, quantity doesn't necessarily mean quality. This year, I only finished 3 anime and all 3 were sequels, which is sad. Or at least that's what I would say if it weren't for summer 2024. This season is absolutely insane, filled with so many hidden gems. We have a mystery anime from one of my favorite authors, classic romances, a lot of romance, absolute brain rot comedy, gooning VTubers, samurais, wizards, surprisingly few isekais, which is a good thing, and of course, the incredibly good looking action we all love. Finally a language that I can understand. I knew that one day my 10,000 hours of Counter-Strike would pay off. Probably the most hyped up enemy of this season is about a girl who likes to hide her feelings in Russian. It's your typical enemy of whatever this genre is called, where an average guy gets to date the hottest girl, something we have only seen in anime. This anime looks pretty cute actually, the main guy for once doesn't seem to be an awkward geek and the girl is also normal, if a Russian speaking tsundere counts as normal. However the one problem I have with this anime is that it has nothing that would make it stand out. S tier. Speaking about romance, one type of anime that went from having at least one every season to now barely even existing is Harem. Maybe because people just got bored of it or maybe because people had enough of the best girl never winning. But don't worry, because this season we got pseudo Harem, where one girl is the wall Harem. She's the tsundere, and the cool girl, and the cat girl. If you had a problem designing who the best girl is, now you don't have to worry. Last year, we had the chance to watch one of the worst anime ever created, which was about how to be a VTuber. In short, it was terrible, made by people who had no idea what a VTuber is. However, this season we got VTuber Legend, which is the exact opposite. It starts out with VTuber Yuki Tanaka, who's seen as this really nice and formal person. While people love her streams, she's nowhere near as popular as the other third generation girls. However, one day, she makes one of the biggest mistakes a streamer can make. She forgets to turn off her stream. This leads to people realizing that she's an alcoholic, watching others play Sausage Legend, which is a real game, and gooning, <laughs> and gooning while listening to an ASMR VTuber. In most cases, you would think that the person would get cancelled after something like this, but instead, it actually makes her even more popular. This is exactly what happens with our VTuber. People absolutely love her drunk, gooning and swearing personality, which suddenly makes her one of the most popular streamers. This anime is absolutely unhinged, but I really enjoy it thanks to how authentic it is. It actually uses programs like OBS, Live 2D and Clip Studio Paint, providing a much more accurate depiction of what a stream actually looks like and how it feels to run it. It's also hilarious. I especially love this scene where they recreated the Ronaldo clip. Not to mention all the references to other VTubers. However, not everyone gets away with controversies. In Midnight Punch, we meet a YouTuber who got cancelled for punching their friend, and no matter how much she tries, it just seems like everyone hates her. If she posts something, she only gets hit comments. If she goes out, she gets bullied or even straight up kicked out. She is desperate for views, for people to care about her, and just when she feels like she wants to end it all, she gets saved by a vampire who dreamed about her. Now they try to create content together and get to a million subs before the channel she got kicked out from. I bet you did not expect that plot twist. Girl Desu, I love manga, anime, and I'm a spitting image of your waifu. Eh, sorry mate, but I only like 2D girls. 
2.5 dimensional seduction is the enemy that you will see all over Twitter. <coughs> I mean X. It's your typical bait of hot girls dressing up in even hotter costumes, but somehow it actually has a decent story. Despite being considered an etchy, I see anime that were way more revealing, to say the least. I actually enjoy the fact that despite your main character being a complete degenerate, he doesn't act stupid. He recognizes that his girl is not much different from him and has no problem allowing her to be part of the club, which is already more progression than in most of our common romance anime. But enough about all of these romances and comedies. This season is filled with some insanely visually appealing anime. Coming from the creator of Assassination Classroom, we have the elusive samurai, and I'm not even going to sugarcoat it, this is my favorite anime so far this season. The aesthetic is bonkers, the backgrounds look amazing, the fights are cool, and it feels like a 90s anime with a lot of extra work. Not to forget about its really unique story about Tokiyuki, an 8 year old boy is the next successor of the Kamakura Shogunate. However, he doesn't want to be the successor, he's not talented at anything and doesn't want to be a puppet like his father. He's constantly running away, hoping something will change. And oh boy, did something change. One day, his life becomes hell as the guardian of the shogunate turns against them and brutally seizes power from the Kamakuras. This turns into literal hell as everyone he knows is brutally murdered and he is the only one left alive. Now he has to run away and restore the Kamakura shogunate to its former glory with the help of a self-proclaimed prophetic priest. Now while it's insane how consistent and good this anime looks, it's not even the only one this impressive. Coming from the creator of Danmachi, we also have Vistoria. It's a story about Will who wants to become a Mahia Wander, one of the best magicians along with his friend. However, while she has already become one, he can't do magic at all. Because of this, his classmates and even his teacher bully him and try to force him out of the school, considering him weak. But Will doesn't really care. It hurts him, but there are people who care about him and support him, which is all he needs. One day, while trying to get extra credits to pass, one of the bullies overhears what kind of monster he has to kill to pass. And he and his friends go ahead to kill that monster, so Will will fail. Unfortunately, they don't realize just how strong these monsters are and they get straight up murdered one by one, until Will arrives and is able to save one of them. I absolutely love this anime. I'm not even a fan of this genre usually, but there is just something so unique about it. It's one thing that even still moments looks absolutely insane, but the characters are super fun. Or mainly this is actually a normal, an awkward guy for once and he has a super cute kitty. Also the world building is so good. I feel like we got so much information super quickly that it's easy to understand. Like I did with Bochi two years ago, I'm going to say that this and the elusive samurai will be the two biggest anime by the end of the season. <laughs> Now, we already have quite a few romance and action focused anime this season, but how about we combine the two? The Magical Girl and the Evil Lieutenant used to be arch enemies is an anime coming from Bones. I still remember that prior to the announcement, everyone thought it was going to be a shonen title like Dandatan or Sakamoto Days, but instead we got this. It's an anime consisting of only 12 minute long episodes where we get the leader of an evil organization that want to destroy Earth and the Magical Girl who is beyond broke. However, in the midst of fighting, they fall in love with each other at first sight, and now we get to see a really cute enemy about two exact supposed trying to flirt while they are supposed to kill each other. Now wait a minute! Oh, I need it again. However, despite all the new anime this season, we also have surprisingly small amount of sequels. There's Oshino Core, more like Oshino Bitches for you this summer either. I'm talking about myself. Surprisingly, it somehow became even more popular thanks to all the incest memes. We also got Tower of God after 4 years, which is officially the first one but to get a sequel. And I can't wait to finally watch something that I actually read prior. Wait, why does it look so generic now? There is also my totally not most awaited enemy for this season, the Cafeterist and its Goddesses, which I will only watch for research purposes. We also got the second core of Nier Automata after almost 2 years of delays, and there's also more fairy tale. Yay! Super cool! Yeah. 
Probably one of the most common tropes in romance is love triangle, but I don't think I ever seen one this complicated. I absolutely adore the main girl from it. She confesses her love, but her surprise her crush is not an actual girl. However, instead of being disappointed, she only has one thing to say. But if you want to watch something even more gay, then there is Twilight Out of Focus, which is just really gay. Like, really, really gay. I, I have nothing else to say about it. Hattori is an enemy about Natsuki, a boy who lost his mother and his leg in an accident some years earlier when a sudden and unexplained sea rise left much of human civilization underwater. One day, a suspicious debt collector presents him with an opportunity to search the sunken ruins of his grandmother's laboratory to find the rumor treasure she left there. However, what they find isn't jewelry or anything like that. It's a robot girl named Hattori, whom they initially plan to sell, but Natsuki decides against it. Just from the why of the first episode, I can tell this is going to end badly no matter what? It's a visual novel with a robot girl? I've seen that before, dude. I know exactly what's going to happen and it's not going to be good. One type of anime I always really loved is Mystery. And this season we have Shoshimi from the creator of Yoko. It's just 8 years older and an owl. As someone who absolutely loved Yoko and is sad that the second season will probably never happen, this is probably as close as we will get to it. I really enjoy how it has a similar vibe, with them trying to solve mysteries in their school and it will probably develop toward a bigger mystery by the end. The only significant difference is the chemistry of our main duo. They are completely different from Oreki and Chitanda. I also have to point out just how good the directing is. There is this scene where they talk about wanting to be just ordinary people and it feels like I'm watching Monogatari. However, if you want to watch something similar in in vibe but with a bit more romance, then you should watch Days with my stepsister. I know what you are thinking when you hear that title, but I swear it's not another domestic girlfriend. What really surprised me about this anime is how normal the characters acted. There were none of your generic anime tropes that you usually see. Most of it just felt really real and super cute. I love this scene where the dad tried to impress the new family members. It just felt so real. Now one anime I almost missed out on because it released so late is Makaine. I had no expectations for it, but damn, this looks insane! Animation wise and directing wise, this is probably the strongest. It really reminds me of Kyoto Animation where everything is unnecessarily detailed. It's a high school romance where our main character witnesses more and more girls going through heartbreak as they become third wheels. They all have different reactions to that, they all deal with it differently, and our main character is pretty much dragged into listening to it. It sounds simple, but the first episode was spectacular both visually and story wise. At one point it just felt super relatable, which can be pretty annoying, but it shows that it's fairly well written. Even if you don't like romance, please check this out. Oh, say can you see? I don't know if I'm enjoying this show too much or just the right amount. This show is so stupid and dodgy that it's actually good. I mean, we get a guy that is 30, but still wants to be an adventurer, so he quits his well-paying job to train with four of the strongest adventurers. This is just dumb fun. We are two episodes in and so far he beat up a child, his sister, and now he's going for the brother. But if you want to watch something even more American than an anime with guns, then you have Bye Bye Earth, where the anime is about this girl who everyone is racist toward because she looks different than them. So so far, there hasn't been much happening in the anime other than a fight and the backstory, but I see huge potential in it. The main character is really likable, the background art has more detail than an entire season of Tokyo Revengers, the music is by Kevin Pankin, and once again he did such an outstanding job. However, if what interests you is a classic fantasy with some unique gimmicks, then we have I Parry Everything, where our main character can only parry things. When I first saw the title, I instantly thought this was going to be another super generic fantasy, but I was pleasantly surprised by how good of a backstory they wrote for our main character, who is really really enjoyable. I genuinely never felt bored watching it, even though I don't usually like fantasy. No way. No Longer Allowed in Another World is an anime featuring Osamu Dazai, more known as Shuji Tsushima, an incredibly famous novelist who, like many others around that time, committed seppuku. In this anime, we follow his life as he tries to commit seppuku after Trakun stops him from doing it. It's sad yet really funny at the same time. For example, I found it hilarious how as soon as he reincarnated in this other world, he just 
overdosed. However, I genuinely don't know if I'm supposed to find it funny or just sad. But if you want an isekai that is a lot more generic, then we have Isekai Suicide Squad, featuring all the well-known characters from the franchise where they get to send to another world, where their helicopter gets attacked, killing both pilots and their supervisor. Now they're stuck in an unknown world without knowing what they are even supposed to do and with a bomb being plated in their necks that will explode in 72 hours. The story overall is really simple, and that's kind of the point. The charm of this show is that it introduces something familiar while adding new elements. If you are an anime fan, you know exactly how an Isekai works and already have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. But you might not know who the Suicide Squad is. Maybe you heard of Harley Quinn, but you have no idea who the others are. It is a good way to get introduced to them. It has some problems, like some really out of place references towards modern media, not something you really see in anime. However, it's written by Nagatsuki Tape and Umehara Eiji, so it will be an enjoyable watch for sure. <laughs> And some people really thought the Muzan work was iconic. Now the final anime is my dear friend Nokota, an anime that went from absolutely no one knowing about to one of the most popular ones thanks to one stupid clip. The best way I could describe this anime is as the Gen Z version of Nichijou. It's super random, things don't make any sense, there's deers everywhere, she keeps dying every episode, there's deers everywhere. The whole anime is just pure brain rot. But that's exactly why it's so damn popular. It's a high quality shitpost coming from Studio Vit, which went from Attack on Titan and Vinland Saga to VTuber anime and CGI deers. If you love anime like Nichijou or Kamikatsu for example, this is perfect for you. Otherwise, you're probably only going to enjoy those no context clips that go viral. But now that I gone through all the animated people will actually watch, let's stay true to the title and rank them all. This ranking is obviously based on the first two or three episodes that are out so far, so the list probably won't look the same at the end of the season. I know that I said the Russian one goes in S tier, but I will put it in A simply because while I really enjoy it, it has just a bit too much fan service for me and it somehow feels a bit uncomfortable. However, the faces I am made in episode 2 might push it back up. Pseudo Harem is a really obvious B tier. I like the idea, it's something unique, but it didn't really stand out for me. While it will definitely will be a fun watch, I disliked how it has no sense of time. In one episode we went from the start of the year to midterms to school days. VTuber Legend is a solid day. It's not my type of anime, but I enjoyed how authentic it is. I just don't know how they can make 12 episodes of this. Pinai Punch is a high C? It looks solid, but I just don't care about any of the characters, they all feel quite miserable. 2.5 dimension selection is maybe an A or top B? It's your typical lechi harem with a clueless guy. It's fun to watch and I enjoyed both episodes so far, but it's not a good anime. The elusive samurai is easily S tier. This anime looks absolutely insane. I was blown away by the quality of it and I really like the setting of the story. Exactly same about Vistoria. The magical girl and the heavy lieutenant used to be arch enemies is a low B. I don't mind the anime, but for how short and simple it is, I'm surprised that Bones picked up this manga. It looks stunning, but I wonder what will make this stand out. Senpai is an Konoko is a solid B, enjoyable characters and some pretty funny jokes. Twilight Auto Focus is a high C, it looks good and I like the story, but I'm just not into this kind of anime at all. Atori is a solid A tier, looks great, has the most interesting and unique story out of all the anime, but I know it's going to make me cry, and I'm not ready for that. Shoshimin is also S tier. The directing is amazing, it's obviously from a writer that I enjoy, and the opening is from Eve, which sounds amazing. Days with my stepsister is a low A. It feels surprisingly realistic, I just really hated how melancholic it is. When you make every scene like that, the important ones feel less impactful. Makain is easily S tier. I'm a sucker for this kind of anime. Tosa New by Adventure is high B. I enjoy it a lot for some reason, but it's your typical trash fantasy with your insanely dense main character. Bye Bye Earth is another high B. Considering just how many outstanding names works on it, this can be really good. But so far it hasn't done anything unique other than having some really good song. Hyper everything is actually a low A. It's your typical fantasy, but the way it was built up made it super enjoyable. No longer allowed in another world is a B maybe? It's filled with suicide jokes and has some pretty funny scenes. I don't know how it can stay interesting for 12 episodes though. Isekai Suicide Squad is a high B. I like it, it's fun, it has some good action, but the writing feels super generic. I 
know that's what they are going for, but it's such a waste when you have two excellent writers. And finally, my dear Nokotan is the top of A. I just can't put it into S, it's way too much brain rot. But man, it's super fun to watch. That's all of summer 2024, it has some really good, weird and fun anime. If you enjoyed this video, a subscription and a like is a huge support. And if you want to see what anime we had last season, click on this video. Goodbye.